Well, welcome to this week's edition of the Good News Show. If this is your first time joining us, I want to introduce myself. I'm Cheryl, and this is my daughter. Olivia. And there's a very important person that's missing, and that would be Pastor Rick. If you are just joining us, uh, Pastor Rick is my husband. We've been married for over 41 years, and our lovely daughter Olivia is 14. But Pastor Rick is on a trip uh, in Rhode Island and Connecticut uh, this weekend, so we are missing him and want him to come back soon. Uh, and if you are obviously a, a longtime viewer, we also want to welcome you. And Liv and I decided to, to do this show uh, in Pastor Rick's absence. So we hope that you'll uh, get some inspiration and uh, some encouragement out of today's show. But I want to remind everybody about our Wednesday Bible study, the show called Consider This. We are in a new series for May. And if you watched last week's show, uh, that, that sermon was called uh, Covered by the Dust of Your Rabbi. And this Wednesday, he's going to continue the series with the duties of your calling. So make sure you check back on our website under Consider This and continue watching that series. It is a powerful teaching, so we're so happy to, to have that available. Uh, right now, I'm going to have Liv uh, read us uh, the word of the week that our show is going to be on today. So Liv, I'm going to let you take it away. Okay, so this week's good word is hope. Mm -hmm. A feeling mm -hmm. of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. Yes, and as you know, Pastor Rick has said this many mm -hmm. times, hope is hearing other people's experiences. So I'm going to share a little bit about an experience that Liv and I share. Um, and then I'm also going to kind of uh, give you a little foundation for a video that I found, which will definitely lead back into that. But as you know, on this show, we always like to have some good sayings. So they're going to come up on the screen. And Liv, I'm going to have you read a few of these for us, if you wouldn't mind. Okay. They're good sayings. The natural flights of the human mind are not from pleasure to pleasure, but from hope to hope. Mm, love that one. Do we have another one there? Yes, we do. And that's going to come up on your screen. Hope is the little voice you hear whisper, maybe, when it seems the entire world is shouting no. Oh, that maybe, when everybody else around you is telling you that's not going to happen. How about one more for us? Hope. Sometimes that's all you have when all you have, when you have nothing else. If you have it, you have everything. Mm -hmm. so, I like that one. That yes, I like that one. Um, do we have one more or is that it? That's it. That is it. Well, let me just now, I'm going to dive into hearing other people's experiences and that's going to be, I'm going to give you just a little bit of our experience. Um, if you are new, uh, Liv came to us when she was about three years old. We were foster parents, uh, Pastor Rick and I, and uh, we had the very blessed fortune of being able to adopt her when she turned nine. So as you could do the math, there was six long years in there, um, and if I didn't have the, the hope that God had given me, uh, the word that Liv was to be our daughter and I hung on to that when everybody else at one point was so concerned about me that I was they said I was obsessing about this but for me I knew God had given me that word and I knew he was going to provide ways to make this happen and in fact our church even did an intervention I don't know if you remember them all coming one night and they all sat chairs around and they sat me in the middle and I think you were upstairs in your bedroom playing and they said you know the courts are kind of funny and the attorneys are you know kind of not sure if it's gonna go your way and we're concerned and and I never gave up hope and God never let me down through that whole thing even when people around me were starting to question and waver and say no and I just believed that God would give me some steps mm -hmm. because nothing is ever laid out for us it says God will give us our steps and one of the steps that came like in the middle of the night he said you gotta get online and and do some research and I remember I was up for like weeks at a time 
going online and, and trying to find cases, anything that might be relevant to what we were going through at the time. And I don't want to get into a lot of details, but one night I found this case study, um, this child versus their biological parents, and I called my uh, assistant attorney and, and the GAL, which is the guardian ad litem that the court had appointed for Olivia, and said, okay, Olivia needs to get her own attorney. That way, you know, she has a voice because she was only like six or seven at the time, and you don't get to go into court, so we thought, until you're like 12. Anyway, to condense this, they said that'll never happen. The court will never grant her an attorney. She's, she's a, you know, a healthy young child. They only uh, will appoint, appoint that if you know, they're in an institution and mentally can't speak for themselves. But God, and I love that, but God said, keep at it. And so I did. And the judge did, in fact, appoint her uh, an attorney, which you got along with great. She used to take her out for ice cream. We couldn't even go on the appointments, but she said, my client which was you. So uh, anyway, we got the attorney, and then God just, I mean, it was like almost like dominoes. Once you trust and hold on to that hope, it was almost like dominoes that, you know, things started to fall into place. And in fact, they did let Olivia testify on her own behalf in court. And so that little peanut, I think you were seven, weren't you? 75 minutes she spoke on her own behalf. So anyway, and what happened on June 4th, 2009? I got adopted. You got adopted and, and the judge so said... So birthday's coming up. Yes, your, your adoptive birthday's coming up June 4th. Well, we'll have a little party on the show maybe. And anyway, we had the most people the courtroom had ever seen in that. So if there's anyone out there, I just... You can you may not be in that situation, but use that experience to see how hope worked for that situation. And now, speaking of hope, you know we there's a lot of questions on you know when you are a believer, what really happens after. And there's a cool movie out right now called Heaven Is For Real. And if you haven't seen it, you you must. Um, I'll just lay it up a little bit, and Liv's going to explain a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, this four-year-old had what we would call a near-death experience and went to heaven. And so the good movie this week, uh, Heaven is for Real, and Liv's going to give you a little brief uh, summary of what you can glean from this movie. Go ahead, babe. Okay, so this week's movie, what my mom said, is Heaven is for Real. It's about... The changes the way you think about eternity offers a chance to see and believe like a child and delivers a simple message that heaven is for real. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. It's a definite movie. You should go see in the movie theater. In the movie theater, yes. And it's definitely worth it. And um, I think one of the things that I really enjoyed about the movie, of course, being animal lovers that we are, um, the little boy came back and said that he had uh, seen the horse that only Jesus could ride. And, and if you know the, the end of the Bible, that's an important horse. But of course, he said, yes, there are animals in heaven. So yay! I started making a list of all my animals that are going to be waiting there for me. And Pastor Rick said, we're going to need a bigger house. <laughs> But yeah. I don't know, that just gives me encouragement. And so um, another experience that I want to share with you, I'm going to kind of lead in with my next verse. The verse is going to come up on the screen, and Liv's going to read it for us. It's one of my favorite scriptures, uh, Isaiah 40, 31. I just love this. So Liv, would you read that for me? Sure. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Mm. And another version of that uh, also says, uh, for those who wait on the Lord. And that word wait doesn't mean to sit and do nothing. Because if, if we had sat and done nothing, you wouldn't be sitting here today. <laughs> but that wait on the Lord means to, to gather together. It's when you have a trust and a hope in God, you gather together with him, and that's how you get to walk those steps. Um, 
Lim, I've got a couple of other verses here before I go into the video. I want to okay. get, I want to just kind of build up people's hope. Um, when you hear these verses, I hope that they'll, they'll make a, a way into your heart. God wants us to have hope. And so I want you to hear these words and put them into your heart, put them into your mind so that when you're going through whatever the situation is, you know that God has purposely given you a spot for hope in your heart. Mm -hmm. Liv, they're going to come up on the screen as she reads them. Okay. 2 Corinthians 3.12 Therefore, since we have such hope, we use such we use great boldness of speech. That's right. When you, ha I had hope that I was going to be able to work things out with Olivia. So I made phone calls. I called everybody from the top of the state to the bottom of the state. I was bold because I knew the hope I had in Christ. Liv, read the next one for us. Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to just let you know that's probably one of Pastor Rick's favorite verses. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's a perfect place for me to, to introduce the, the video that I have. God has plans for you. Whatever the situation that you're going through, God has a good plan for you. It might not look good right now. It didn't look good for us. And when you watch this video, I, I want you to understand that we're all God's creatures. And as I said, we're animal lovers. And so I chose this week not a video of hope so much with, with people, but this is, you're going to see a video of uh, a, a, an abandoned animal. And it's pretty graphic, and I chose it specifically for the fact that it was graphic because when you look at this video, you're going to see this poor creature on the outside, what I believe some people look like on the inside. When they are hopeless, you're going to see a hopeless situation until the glimmer of hope from God comes in through a person. If you can look at this video and understand what somebody right next to you, a loved one or, or a stranger on the street, can look like on the inside and know they just are at the point of giving up, but God can send hope in the form of a person or even his Holy Spirit at your darkest hour, when you think this is the end, you're on a, a pile of trash, you're in a dump in your life, and hope will come, and, and you will start to feel cleaned off. You will see miraculous things happen. People will start touching your life. You know, God works through people. He has to send people and people that are, are obedient. And he is there. He is that hope that you pick your head up and you've got that little gleam in your eye and you just know you take that next step and that next step and it's going to get better and it's going to get better and hang on to the end of the video because you're going to see how hope can transform even the most miserable situation mm. into true love. Watch this video. Oh, there she is. Holy, holy. Okay, so she definitely smells something dead. She definitely has mange. It's horrible. Yeah.
one? There you go. Good girl. Oh, okay. Come on, let's go. Come on. Okay, okay, okay. Come on. Good girl. Come on. Okay, I'll walk with you. Oh, no, no, we're not sitting down again. Come on. Let's go. Good girl. Good girl. Come on. Good girl. No, 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 we're not fighting. Let's go. It's okay. Come on, let's go. Come on, up. There you go. Good girl. There you go. That was a powerful video. I know we're we're both sitting here all, <laughs> all mushy, but that is that is the hope. You got to hear other people's experiences, and you got to hear the story of that um, beautiful dog. Uh, in fact, the other little one was also rescued, and they now have hope. You actually can see how hope transform their lives and we get to do that we get to do that when we have trust and belief in God and he gives us that so that we can go out and help others and not and not just animals but people you have that hope inside that you can now share with others uh, Liv would you lead, read that one last verse for us before we close out the show today yeah, sure. and it's going to come up on the screen for you thank you honey Romans 15, 13. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may be abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -mm -mm. Now may he give you hope. Now as we said in Jeremiah 29, 11, God has a plan for you and it is for good. And so we want to close our show as we always do with what is that good plan? So Liv and I are going to read it, and it's going to come up on the screen, and you can read along with us. The good news is when we trust God's grace to save us through the work of Jesus, our sins are forgiven, we get a purpose for living, and we are promised a future home in heaven. The good news is God has never made a person he didn't love. Everybody matters to him. When he stretched out his arms wide on the cross, he was saying, I love you this much. The good news is that whatever you're going through, whether physical, relational, financial, or emotional, God will turn it around. His delay is not his denial. He will make a way where there seems to be no way. So make Jesus the Lord of your life today and get a Bible so you can learn his teachings. 
find a grace-filled church so you can grow in Christ. And let's pray this prayer together. Let's bow our heads and it's going to be this prayer that we hope you will listen to over and over again. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is abuse, let me bring love. Where there is hurt, let me bring forgiveness. Where there is doubt, let me bring faith. Where there is despair, let me bring hope. Where there is darkness, let me bring light. Where there is sadness, let me bring joy. Dear God, help me that I focus not on being comforted, but that I may comfort others. Not that I try to be understood, but that I understand others. Not that I am loved, but that I love others. For it is in the giving that we receive. It is in the forgiving that we are forgiven. It is in dying to self that we are born into a meaningful life. In Jesus' name we pray. pray. And Amen. remember, it's all good when Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord. See you next week, and don't forget our Bible study. Consider this on Wednesday nights. Thanks for joining us.